first video! That one, that one there. Uh, so today we're doing crankcase ventilation. Um, when we hit the dyno, when I hit the dyno with J-Cal, uh, it became quite apparent quite quickly that we had some serious back leak issues. Uh, some of them were fairly easy to spot, so this was the original throttle body that I was running, which is a hashed up PRB with a load of blanking plates on. And um, the 3D printed uh, idle air control valve block off plate that I had, had basically a weighed warped. So um, there was air getting there. Then it turned out once, uh, then it turned out that the gasket itself had, had a slight tear in, so that was kind of crap. Uh, and then the fun one that didn't uh, didn't come out for a while was this. So the check valve on um, the lower crankcase, the crankcase check valve here, which you can get off with a 17 mil. Um, should only. This this should only be this should only be a one-way check valve. So effectively, when it's in the block, air should be able to travel this way. Um, so that pushes the crankcase that pushes any crankcase gas out of the block, and then it returns into the inlet manifold, uh, and then the the cycle continues. And then when under boost, there is a check valve in there with a little spring um, that closes that closes the valve. Now the problem that we had was uh, the valve has failed so so you can get air straight the way through it. So depending on which camp you sit in, if you're going NA or boosted, sort of dictates what you're gonna read on the forums. Um, the NA boys will pretty much say that you can get away with blocking the lower PCV and then running a couple of decent sized fittings straight off the rocker cover uh, and any air that gets trapped in the crankcase will find its way back up through the oil return passages which I would probably I would probably agree with myself um, anything that's that's not running or not running serious boost would probably get away with that um, and at first that's what I was going to do. So I was just going to take an M14 by 1.5 block off. Um, block that off in there. And then on the RBC, which isn't here at the moment, just plug the, uh, plug the cap on the end um, of the inlet. Um, and then just let these two uh, dash 12 fittings um, do the work. And then the more I read about it, the more I thought about it, well, it, the more pressure that can escape the crankcase, especially with a turbo, um, well, is, is better effectively. But the, the setup that we're going to be doing to, today, uh, we've got two dash 12s coming off the rocker cover. Um, they're going over to a nuke catch can um, with a couple of heavy duty hoses. And then what I'm going to do from here is I've shot over to Advocate and I've bought an M14 by 1.52 um, bar push fitting hose. So we're going to drop this in here, run the line, split and then split and T into one of these. Um, I couldn't really find that this was like I found like one place online that were doing um, half decent tees, uh, which I'll link below. Um, but this turned up pretty well, up pretty quickly, and it seems pretty well made. Um, so we're going to drop a T into the existing line, just underneath the, just underneath the uh, the air filter on the underside of the turbo. So one of the lines that I have coming off the rocker cover, um, both of them run underneath the air filter that sits on the turbo. The turbo being in pieces at the moment because compressors compressor housing is off for coating. Um, so what I'm going to do is mark up roughly where I want this T to sit, which I think, looking at 
that turbo housing is going to be about here. The turbo is coming out this way. I want to try and hide this fitting underneath the shroud, so about there, pointing outwards. Should just about do it there. Uh, so we've marked up the we've marked up the hose. We're just going to chop that now. Try this fitting in. Okay, so we're back. Wrong T fitting was ordered. Needed the bigger one. It's totally fine. Um, so now I'm just going to start warming up the hoses. Get a cup of hot water. To the end of your hose. Drop it in the hot water. Just makes the uh, just makes everything easier when it's going onto the T. So now with everything coming together, we're just going to drop this side onto here. So you can see here that you don't want the hose to kink coming off the rock cover. So we're going to take a fair bit out of that, I think. Probably 25mm an inch, something like that, and just let it let it run sort of slightly lower back to the Catch can. Going back to our push fit ho uh, push fit barb fit in. Hose should be nice and warm now. That's been in there for about ten minutes, something like that. Straight in until it's sitting nice and flush in there. And then in terms of actually rooting the hose, you don't want to run it completely straight purely because you don't want any oil having the chance to run back into the crankcase. So what, what I'm going to do is run this with a slight bow in it, run it underneath the upper radiator hose and then straight onto the T there. And there we go, and that all loosely tacked up um, and pushed in. That's sort of what we're going to be looking at. So now we've got uh, free flow straight the way through. Picking up off this tee here and then straight into a catch can. Uh, I'm just going to braid these up. I'm going to throw this one on here, just loosely for now. I'm going to tuck this one on here. So that's everything tightened up. So we've come out with a barb fitting here. Sunk the line a little bit, it's come round onto this T. A couple of cable uh, cable ties to go on here. Tin into this. It sits underneath the turbo and everything's going back into this catch can. 